You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Although Hidden Traps is not officially released until August 1st, you can pre-order your paperback or ebook copy now from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit BlackWolfPublications.com for more details. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 
And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. Welcome back, America. This is the General Nick Show. We're coming to you live right now from KLRNRadio.com, where usually we do this thing every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern, but we took a couple days off. But I have really, really missed my co-host, so I'm glad she's back with me. And uh, <laughs> I'd like to give her a moment to say hello and kind of get, get us up to speed as to what she's had going on for the last couple of episodes that we missed. Sure. Um, so I'm extremely excited to be back. I uh, just took a family vacation with my extended family to a lake that we spent much of our childhoods on. That's kind of a has a special place in our heart. And uh, like most good family vacations, I need a real vacation after the family vacay. <laughs> You know that that's that that's like true for pretty much any vacation. I don't understand the American concept of vacation. I'm just going to be honest because we schedule this time off to cram as many things as possible into said time off, and then we come back from the vacation wanting a vacation so that we can rest from the vacation that we just took before we actually have to go back to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially when like with this kind of thing where you know we're all staying in one very large house, but. We're all staying in a large house and it's aunts and uncles and cousins and, you know, grandparents and parents. And it, it, it my family is huge and we do all sorts of crazy, crazy things together. And they're crazy awesome, but crazy nonetheless. So um, as with any group that big, you know, we don't have that much conflict when we're all together like that. We do have a lot of fun, but things just, you know, it's just exhausting at times. And as much fun as it is, you're just completely worn out when you get done. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, ba bear with me for just a second because I've just noticed something and I think I figured out what's causing a glitch that's going on. Um, for, okay, I'm going to talk shop for a second. So for the last couple of times we've done an episode here, um, they've changed the way that we do the cataloging when we go live if we're using the speaker feed. So I keep picking the right show, but by the time I hit play, it's dropping to another category and I think I figured out what's happened. I think Richard is uploading a show in between the time that I'm hitting play, so I think it's using the last category that he used because this has now done it, done it to me twice and it's the only thing that I can think of because we're now officially broadcasting in the God's Pure Word of Faith category, which is supposed to be on tomorrow morning. And sadly, they have made that a lot harder than it used to be. So I'll have to actually go back in and re-upload it to the right category so we can get it over to all the distribution points in the right file. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Spreaker, for making things a lot harder than they used to be. Because used to, if something like that happened, which it, it does rarely happen if somebody's uploading a show to another file, we used to just be able to go click a button and go, oh, look, we'll move it now. And yeah, no. <laughs> now it's like a <laughs> big, hairy ordeal, and it's like annoying and... It's, it's, well, it, it, it's happened this because we haven't done the show in a couple of days, but it happened the last time we did the show, and now it's happened right. again. And I know for a, a fact, before I hit play, I hit or before I hit launch, we were in the right category. So I'm thinking Spreaker is glitching out if somebody's working behind the scenes in the same folder. All right. So anyway, enough of me complaining about the changes to Spreaker, because um, we have a lot of other things that we could we could be complaining about. So. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how much you've been able to keep up with because I know in the last few days you've still had a lot of stuff going on. So um, anything in particular you want to touch on or are we just kind of jumping in wherever? Let's let's just dive in. You know, I know some and I've uh, trying to play catch up on some other stuff. So I'm sure even if I only have a snippet, I'll be just fine to give an opinion. <laughs> Well, I mean, the good news is, since we haven't done the show in officially, what are we at, sitting at, it's been exactly, well, it's been, what, 
almost a week and a half I guess, since we've done the show. Yeah, um, yeah, about. So, so there, yeah, we've got like a week and a half's worth of news to catch up on. Like the fact that you know we were we were talking about the last time we were here, the fact that uh, Scaramucci was actually being appointed the new comms director. Guess who's no longer the comms director? <laughs> Yeah. So you know that. Look, you know. Go ahead. My thing. My thing with that is: look, say what you want. If the, if this was a Democratic administration right now, the Republicans would be having a field day over all the hirings and firings. The fact that they're now trying to excuse all the hirings and firings. Well, I don't care how many people he gets rid of because I hired Trump and I I know he knows how to do the job, so I'm gonna let him bring in the people that he thinks can do the job. That that's great, but if he knows how to bring in the people that can do the job, why didn't he do that the first five times? Well, and and I think the other thing for me is we're seeing where um, there's a disconnect with all the, but you know he's run a good business and he understands all that, and doesn't, where that maybe doesn't translate to running the government. We know it doesn't translate to it, but um, but there have been business-minded presidents that have made it work to their advantage. I think in this case, it's just not. In addition, I don't think that um, it, what he's doing, it doesn't even fly in the business world. I mean, as a CEO of a company, you don't just get to fire and hire however you want at, at women and change policies like crazy and just disrupt, you know, the entire structure of the company whenever you want to because someone you didn't like someone or because they said something. I mean, you know, you still are beholden a lot of times to a board or uh, to investors, uh, to clients, to all sorts of things that put a check on you from just going, you know, willy nilly power hungry. And so it doesn't even make sense if you want to use the CEO excuse, because that's not how that works either. And he wouldn't have had several successful businesses if everything was like that. And I said something to a few of my family members while we were, and some of them are extremely pro-Trump and defensive, and then some of them are very much not. And there's a few liberals thrown in. But um, one thing I said is, you know, it's really great. It's really great to be in the good favor and sit next to the king. It's impossible to survive when he's a tyrant. And I'm not saying that Trump is a dictator, and I'm not saying that he's a tyrant in the true sense of the word, but he has tyrannical behavior, and he has issues with anybody, any type of criticism. He has issues with what he perceives as disloyalty. He has issues with what he perceives as betrayal. He has, he is paranoid, he is narcissistic, and he is a knee-jerk, he's a knee-jerk reactor. So I think a lot of these things that we see um, is that that's what it is, is that um, when someone behaves that way, when you're in their good graces, everything is awesome. And the second that you don't even realize you stepped out of line and you fall out of their favor, off with your head. Ask Henry VIII. Ask Anne Boleyn. That's how that went down. So I, I just think that there, I think that there is not that it's all a mess. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of experience mixed with inexperience, but the experienced people can't say anything. And even those that maybe could help right the ship know better than to try to do so because he will turn on them. And I don't know how anything is going to be accomplished. And if, if that's how this continues, and I don't see any sign of it stopping, it's going to be a mess from here on out. I think, I mean, you know, Everybody's made jokes over the last couple of weeks about this basically being uh, Apprentice White House. Because, yeah. Because it's like every week he's like sitting in front of a TV camera yelling, you're fired. The scary thing is it's no longer a joke because that's actually what's happening. Look at right. That. And I think that's a good point. So he's not running this like he would run his company as CEO or a COO or in some other way, the the president or head of a company. He's running it. He's running it like his TV show where he is the producer, basically the creator, and also um, is in charge when on air. <laughs> so you're right. That That is a lot of what it's like. That is a much more apt analogy than saying it's like 
you know, well, this is how it is when you run a business. No, it's not. No, it's this is not. how it is when you run a TV show about business and and being a show off. <laughs> Be, because, well, the, the thing about it is, and this is what drives me crazy, because a lot of people come at me on social media or even through email, and they don't know my background. They don't realize that I spent 12 years of my life building a business that eventually crumbled because of the Obama administration and the things that they brought in. But I know what it's like to build a business, and I understand what it means to be a hands-on business owner. But there is still a point when you bring people in to run things for you, and you allow them to run those things. You don't micromanage it, because at some point you can't. It, it reminds me, because um, Musket actually filled in for a Foo last night, and he, he had a really good guest on who was actually an entrepreneurial expert. And she was talking about the very same thing, that in the beginning phases of a business, if you are the one that's doing everything, then you can't actually focus on the big picture because you're too busy micromanaging every little detail because you have to be the one to do everything. Right now, Donald Trump is treating the presidency as if he is the one who has to do everything because he is honestly the one who thinks he has to do everything. Instead of doing what he said he was going to do, because let's not forget what he campaigned on, he said he was going to bring the best people in to bring America back to the forefront and, in, in his own words, make America great again. America is not great right now. I mean, look, you can say what you want about the economy. There are people that are touting the economy right now because it's moving in the right direction. He's just boasted about bringing all these jobs in. I think they're talking about bringing some sort of a uh, production plant into like Wyoming or something. That's that's not done yet. There's no ink on paper. He can say whatever he wants. That Right. And the thing about that is he can literally do that. And as somebody who's run a business, he understands how to work the media. That's that's one of the things that is driving the media absolutely crazy because he can basically do and say whatever he wants to do because he's got them all dancing on a string and they hate it. And it's one of the things that has made all of his sycophants absolutely go nuts because we, they finally feel like they have a president in the White House that has the media wrapped around their finger instead of the other way around. And the media is doing everything they can to break his, to break his hold on them and they're coming at him with everything that they have. But the problem with that is... He is still the one in a knife fight when he doesn't need to be the one in the knife fight. He has people for all of the things that he is currently doing right now that he's in the forefront and he's the one smashing heads and he's the one taking names. He shouldn't be doing any of that right now. He should be operating as a CEO. He knows how to do it. He's done it, but he spent so many years as this reality TV star. I literally think he doesn't know how to find the switch for it anymore. I, I, he doesn't know how to turn it off. Now that he... because. And it, and this is something that I that I've watched after going back and finding old footage of Donald Trump before he became this reality TV star mogul. If you look at him before, he was meek, he was mild. Anytime he did interviews, most of the time when he was younger, he was staring at his feet until somebody spoke to him. And then at some point, he figured out if I act this way, people pay attention to me and people will listen to me. And then he, then he figured out that if I make sure I'm always the smartest person in the room, then people will continue to want to hear from me. And he's told people that behind closed doors. While he's been campaigning to people that, hey, I'm going to bring, bring in the best and brightest people, he's literally been telling people at dinner parties and stuff that I've heard private recordings of that I guess he didn't know were made. Well, I always make sure that I'm the smartest person in the room because then everybody wants to hear my stories. Right. This is not what we need. And now on top of all of that, now I just saw something come across uh, earlier today that apparently now the entire administration is on board with a clean debt ceiling lift. The entire oh, administration. Oh, good gravy. Now, I, I want to remind folks what we're talking about here. We're talking about the very thing that the Republicans were completely opposed to for the last eight years with very good reason because this basically just means that we're going to turn them loose to print their own money again which is the last thing they should be doing and it's the exact same thing that donald trump on his own twitter account remember how we always tell everybody that internet's forever the right. the day that they announced there were one of his people announced that at this point the entire administration is fine with a clean lift of the debt ceiling Somebody put out his tweet from like two, three years ago. I can't believe the Republicans are okay with raising the debt ceiling. As a Republican, I'm embarrassed. Are you embarrassed now? Because now it's your team doing it or talking about it. I'm confused. Yeah, I don't under... I mean, well, 
I guess I do understand it. You know, he he was. This is Trump. I mean, this is this is so quintessential Trump. Uh, he doesn't have a foundation, so he is very free to go with whatever works at the time or what he thinks will be good at the time or you know I, I mean he has flipped and flopped so many times over the years and we all said all of us that got slammed for being never trumpers um we all said that this is what would happen he wouldn't hold fast on all of these things they swore he would and he swore he would and here we are in hardly anything and i am sorry Hardly anything has been done, and if you throw Gorsuch in my face one more time, that was not something that he took initiative to do. There was a seat vacant. He had to make a choice. I'm very glad he made the right one, and I will continue to be thankful and praise him for it. But that was not some uh, policy that he came up with, and that was not some bill he got behind. That was not something he was able to really control that would happen he was put in a position where that was available and so he had to make a decision and again i am very glad he made the right one and i supported him 100 percent on that but um he other than that this has just been it's been a crap shoot and it's been chaotic I mean, there, there's no better word for it than chaotic. And what is driving me crazy is not only do we now have an administration that's talking about doing a clean debt ceiling lift, which every Republican was opposed to just a few short months ago. Um, we also have an entire group of Republicans that campaigned on the idea of, re of repealing Obamacare. Then it suddenly morphed into repealing and replacing Obamacare a couple of years after they floated the repeal idea. Then it turned into, well, we can't get it done, so we're just going to wait for it to implode. Now we have an entire group, and what, what disturbs me the most is I have actually heard a couple of local radio talk show hosts here that I actually enjoy, that I usually listen to on both my drive-in and my drive-out from the day job now, talking about the fact that since Trump hasn't been able to get anything done as far as the the medical care and all that stuff that he should start governing by executive order so we literally oh my god we literally now have <laughs> conservatives pushing for republicans to do the very thing that we were diametrically opposed to under the obama administration because even his own party's against him so what other choice does he have and i've literally seen this seen people make that same argument to me on social media when i said look it's this simple. If you were opposed to executive orders and were crying and gnashing your teeth every time Barack Obama talked about his pen and his phone, but now you're wanting Donald Trump to govern by executive order, then you are a hypocrite. And it really is that simple. I'm not pulling any punches. I'm not apologizing for it because it's the truth. If you if you were opposed to it before because of the Constitution, and that's what everybody was yelling about, well, what he's doing is unconstitutional because he's circumventing the Congress, blah, 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 blah. Well, what do you think Donald Trump's going to be doing if he starts ruling by executive order? And why are you okay with it now? What happened to consistency? That is, that is honestly the thing that has been driving me mo the most crazy for all of 2017. It's like I have literally, and I know I've said this before, but I literally, I feel like I wake up every day and I keep looking out of the corner of my eye expecting to see Rod Serling hiding in a corner because it's like everything's gone nuts. There's no distinction between the Democrats and the Republicans anymore. Everybody's all in it for the same thing, which is a power grab. And they're all telling us whatever they want to hear to get elected, whatever we need to hear to get them elected. And then it's like, hey, you know what? Now that you've elected me, screw you. And I'm sitting over here going, and everybody wonders why I've left the GOP and I will probably never come back. Yeah, it's really, um, ugh. This has just become almost too much to stomach. And, and, I'm, and I'm really sick of um, not only just how chaotic and what a mess this administration is. Um, I'm, I am very sick about, and, and I'm sick about the way in which people are responding to Republican leadership. You know, I, I absolutely think that they can do better. I think that there are things they ha have been falling flat on, but I also think that everywhere they turn, um, the Trump fans, when they're trying to do what 
Republicans have actually wanted. And when they've trying to do what their constituencies constituencies actually voted for um, when they are criticizing something like Trump care, when they are failing to vote a certain way on this, or they know that the debate on the House floor is just a show. Um, I, I'm really sick of this group of people or, or, or with the session stuff. You know, if you were defending sessions against Trump at that point, um, even if you were pro Trump, you were called a traitor. Uh, I'm really sick of that. I'm really sick of the pro-Trump sect that refuses, that has just become exactly what they hated in the Obama cult. They have become the exact same thing. They excuse, they spin, they twist, and they justify every single little thing that happens. And by the way, this is why I don't like um, falling for politicians. There are some politicians that I very much admire and like, and I um, really believe in some of the things that they've put forth and what they are here to do. And I think that they are honorable in their intentions. Um, I am not going to fangirl over them to the point where I cannot ever reasonably look at them, their actions, their words, and go, well, I'm not crazy about that, and here's why, because it's inconsistent with the things that you've already said or with the things that Republicans vote for, the GOP platform, or XYZ list of things. My cons my personal principles even, it doesn't even have to be a conservative or, or GOP named principle, my personal principles. So I disagree with you on this front, and I'm going to say why I'm critical of how you've behaved on this or how you voted for that, but then I'm still going to be glad that I do think that you're good overall and I am happy about ABC. To not be able to look at a politician through, quite frankly, I think you should look through them to them uh, through very skeptical lenses and uh, not ever give them the benefit of the doubt, actually. But I, I do find myself giving them the benefit of the doubt all the time because I do know they're human. And I do think that a lot of people go into this kind of service not really knowing they're going to launch a career out of it. But I I think if you can't do that, and if you can't be reasonable when someone criticizes your quote unquote favorite politician or your president, then uh, you're part of the real problem here. And that that is keeping this country when you want people to, to unite and you want people to get behind Trump, you're part of the reason they're not. Because we can't even have a civil conversation about the things that he does wrong or the things that he does right on the other side for the people that are so crazy anti that nothing will ever be good enough and they can admit no good in him at all or in his administration. It doesn't even have to be him, his administration or anything that is slightly positively in his direction. Um, they can't they can't admit or see. And so those two sides being so blind, um, blinded by hate and blinded by love are are truly what is driving me insane and is really keeping us um, as a people in a divided state. We're always going to be divided from the liberals, but we're divided within ourselves that to such an extent that it's ridiculous. And you've got things like you can't admit that this is chaos. Come on. If this was anybody but Trump, you would have a significant portion of GOP voters going, what in the ever loving heck is going on? George Bush wouldn't have gotten away from this junior or senior, you know, and maybe Reagan would have, but he was heavily criticized at times when things were kind of going awry. Um, he's looked more favorably on looking back now historically, but there were even times where the party was not happening with him with that kind of thing. So I, I, it really pisses me off that um, grown adults can't be, adults. Um, <laughs> yeah, analytical, critical, and, and accept that other people are going to see their favorite. I mean, good Lord, he's not, you're not 15 and he's not Justin Bieber. Like grow up. Did you just accuse the Repu Republican Party of going fangirl? Because it kind of sounds yeah, like yeah, the yeah, I, I fangirl. am, okay. and I think I'm a lot of them are. And then when you hear them criticizing any Republican that doesn't do that, as if they are the jerks that are hurting this country, uh, it makes me want to vomit. All right. Well, we have come up against a break. When we come back, we're going to change topics because guess who's back in the news? 
the father of climate change and the inventor of the interwebs, Mr. Al Gore. Uh, we'll change topics and kind of talk about him when we get back because apparently he's released a new Inconvenient sequel and everybody's blasting him now because there's all kinds of nice little facts that are coming out about how much energy he actually uses. So we're going to touch on that a little bit when we get back. Anybody, somebody remind me though, wasn't he the guy that said that we were supposed to be like having no ice caps or something by now? Right, right. The oceans were, everything was going to melt and the oceans were going to overflow and uh, bury countries and continents. That was actually not a bad Al Gore, I'm not lying. All right, we'll, <laughs> we'll be back in about four minutes, folks. Stay tuned. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. Hey folks, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at r-a-h-a-r-d-i-n dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y. 
for more information, or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. folks welcome back welcome back welcome back well as promised before the break we're going to change topics a little bit because you know you can you can only talk about a crazy administration like the trump administration for so long before you literally want to rip your headset off and start running around screaming through the building so we're going to change gears because at least now i can bash on a democrat which is what i like to do anyway what concerns me is i think we've put an act actual rhino in the White House, and nobody listened to me when I warned them. But anyway, so uh, on to Al Gore. So he's uh, put out, a, what is it? It's like called, what, an inconvenient sequel or something? Um, I guess he did some sort of an MTV special because he, like, quote, tweeted it earlier and said, only you, the younger people, can save the planet, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, I, so I kind of, quote, tweeted it myself and was like, hey, I like hypocrisy. You know, I seem to remember you saying that there weren't going to be ice caps by now. Talk to me when you've given up your private jet and your heated pool. Um, so <laughs> speaking of Al Gore, because there's a few things that nobody seems to want to talk about, uh, kind of like the fact that, and of course That's an ad pops place. up right as I start trying to read the article, grr, um, Al Gore's home devours 34 times more electricity than the average U.S. household. So, in other words, Mr. Climate Change is Real is basically a ginormous do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do kind of guy. Oh, well, of course he is. We've we've known this. I mean, I'm kinda, I kind of like having it put into terms that I can throw that number around when people are jerks about it. But, um, I mean, we've known this. He's... Not he's flown privately for a very long time, um, and actually, while he was doing his inconvenient truth tour, he was on, you know, his private jet. Um, he consistently travels to all sorts of conferences on, um, you know, global consciousness of of uh, conserving this earth and climate change and all sorts of things, uh, whatever different names they give them. Um, you know, he oft, often flies uh, privately and um, maintains multiple households, has for a long time, and uh, has not given up what seems like hardly anything in order to reduce his carbon footprint, but, you know, really wants to drive it home with those um you know, basically your average Joe or even your welfare recipients and guilt them into um, doing what they can't afford in order to reduce theirs in order to be good stewards of this planet. It's irresponsible and it's pretty much disgusting, which is all I really think of Al Gore anyways. He's he's a, a, he's a baboon that's a jerk. You know those baboons that like at the zoo, they're always screwing with the other monkeys and then they're kind of like boasting and trying to be in charge, but then they're really flinging poo. Like that's, that's Al Gore. I was wondering when you were going to bring up the fling and poo part. Cause I knew it was coming. You know, yeah. he, he, here's my, here's my thing with Al Gore. This is when I will respect Al Gore because if he's really that big of a proponent of trying to do things to make uh, things better for climate change, which Look, I've never once said climate change isn't real. It's called weather. The climate changes all the time. But whether there, there whether there's a man-made component of climate change, I don't think we have enough data to be able to tell whether there is or there is not. And I'm not Well, I think I think that we can pretty accurately assume that there has been some sort of effect on at least regional climates based on that. We know that from smog and other things like that which has an effect on vegetation and has an effect maybe on our lungs. But to act as if it is some grand thing that goes into the, um, you know, overall, uh, you know, makeup of how the earth and how our atmosphere um, operates, I think is extremely arrogant. We don't know that. Well, yeah. But and I, I mean, it, well, honestly, all I was trying to say at this point is um, that you're right. We do have 
maybe some data to show that there's been some sort of an impact. But these overreactions to the point of where I've I've seen people putting out plans about bringing in giant uh, CO2 scrubbers to put where some of the big holes in the rainforest are now. Not to mention, again, with, right. Al, with Al Gore, I would respect Al Gore a lot more if he honestly thinks climate change is a big deal. If he were to, say, sell his private jet, buy a Prius, and buy all of his neighbor's Priuses. Sell his ginormous house. Buy a little, you know, one of these little tiny living houses that has a very small footprint. Make sure that 50 of his other friends sell their giant houses and buy the little right. tiny houses footprints, and they buy Priuses. And then they take all the money that they're saving from selling their houses and their private jets and their yachts and all the things that they tell us that we don't need because it makes things worse for the environment and then they take that money and they invest it in projects and things to keep the environment cleaner right then i would understand where they're coming from but to tell us that i need to turn my thermostat up by five degrees in the winter time and i need to make sure that i've got three pairs of socks on and two sweaters because i don't deserve to be warm while your house is burning 40 times more electricity than mine you can kiss my yeah you know what i'm about to say but i can't say it on the air well I, and I also think that, um, you know, the last appearance that I saw him make where he was traveling to make a speech, uh, he was rolling in a uh, parade of SUVs. And, you know, that was one of his things, your gas guzzling SUVs that are harmful to the environment. Uh, it's so obnoxious when people are so blatantly hypocritical. But I also think that um, it we have allowed progressives to control this narrative and we have allowed people to um, paint us in a way that I don't think is true. Almost every conservative I know, part of that conservatism is conservation and they do love this planet and they do want to keep it beautiful. They do want to keep it lush and green. They do want to help the animals. They do want to make sure that environments are kept, you know, that uh, very, various ecosystems are kept intact and and a lot i mean you can anytime you put out a tweet about a rescue dog i mean i literally will get thousands of replies from conservatives when i put out something about gardening i will get thousands of replies so there is a difference between conservation and wanting to do what's best and also benefit you know have kind of a mutual benefit you know benefit like have have it to where it's good for the earth but it's also good for us let's plant some trees let's let's um not just um be careless with the way we treat you know our our earth our vegetation our animals and all these other great things that god has given us let's do be conscientious that doesn't mean that I have to support the ridiculous policies and and basically, you know, theft of the EPA and um, and how they treat businesses and how they hold states hostage and all the industries that they hold hostage. That is not, I do not have to do that to be a good steward of this planet. And I'm so sick of being told that unless I believe 100% 100% that we have caused all of these horrible things and that we are personally to blame and that the way we live and what we drive and how we even, you know, walk down the street is affecting what what phone I have in my hand is affecting um, this planet right now and it won't be there for my grandchildren is just absolutely ludicrous. And and I'm sorry, I just, it make, it tunes me out and I, I know that there are people that it makes them want to throw a piece of trash out the window just because, just despite these jerks, because they act like jerks about it. And they act like we are all like, nobody cares. We just would rip out all the trees and we would burn oil and let big, huge smoke clouds go up because we don't care about the air and we don't care about the planet. We don't care about the animals. And it's just such a load of BS. And I'm really sick of it being portrayed that way. Well, I mean, the reason they say that we don't care about the planet is because we won't give up and become vegan, and most of us don't want to drive a Prius. Um, now, I, I actually have downsized. I, I, I don't drive an F-150 anymore. I actually drive a car, but that's mainly because I, I live out in the middle of nowhere now, so I, I actually wanted something that got better gas mileage. Um, all right, so I think we've beat up Al Gore enough, and I just actually saw something else come across that I thought you might actually want to weigh in on. Apparently... 
the NFL has renamed the position headlineman or headlinesman. Um, I guess because I, there is a female headlinesman now, so they've decided they needed a general gender neutral term for the position, which has never in 52 years been used up until now. Um, they've now renamed it the down judge. Oh my god. That was that was the response I was expecting. The, so I, I'm sorry. What is going on here? They're just trying to be well. Number one, I mean, I know they're trying to be like super PC, but it also kind of seems like I mean, this woman got involved in this, and I, as far as I know, um, she hasn't been. I was just googling her. It doesn't seem like she's given them any trouble about this at all like she cares she doesn't care it doesn't seem um i'm i'm reading a little bit about her right now i don't think that this is at the top of her radar or on it on it at all that she gives one little small tiny crap so uh god i guess they're just trying to prove how woke they are i don't know yeah from some folks that are in a group that we're in in common apparently they actually are familiar with her and they're like this is the last thing she ever would have wanted um so here's just a little bit of the snippet from it uh now of course for the last 52 years that position has been called headlinesman now 52 years later the position is getting a new name in the nfl down judge a term not used at any level of football the NFL has moved Sarah Thomas, the league's first permanent female official, from the line judge to the mirror position, and the new name is now gender neutral. <sighs> I hate people. I know I've said that before, but I really mean it. I mean, <laughs> I, just, I just I don't understand the hypersensitivity. I mean, it's like, and this reminds me of something that I saw this morning that I was actually going to touch on here in about 10 minutes or so when I change gears, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it here too. So I saw something, you remember Teen Vogue, you know, and we've been like making fun of them for their crazy article about butt sex. Well, now they put out something um, today that somebody did an editorial. I think it was them again. It may not have been. I'll have to look. But somebody, I don't remember which publication it was, but somebody put out an editorial talking about the fact uh, that they were upset that white people were using black people reactionary gifts because they're calling it like uh, uh, it was like electronic blackface or something and how how those gifts are being overused by everybody and it's just another form of blackface and blah i'm like really so do, do we just literally have to be i mean pardon my language but do we literally just have to be pissed off about everything now we have to yeah no yeah, you you always have to be, um, you know, offended and confrontational and, uh, you know, combative in general. You have to be combative. Well, I think, you know, I actually hadn't heard of this and it, it wasn't put quite this way, but I have a couple of times responded with a GIF. I, you, you know, I, I use GIFs like it's nobody's business. I love them. I think they're great. And they are so much fun to use on something like Twitter, where sometimes words don't quite convey, you know, what you mean. So I, um, I have been accused a time or two of being, it, it wasn't that they said blackface, but they might as well have because I once was told I was culturally appropriating. And another time I was told that I was uh, using that as another way to insult, um, you know, because I was disparaging a black person by using um, a gift that portrayed an African American, I don't know, doing the shruggy thing or something stupid. But so I, I'm not surprised. Well, really not surprised. <laughs> now, see, here's the thing about me, and this is probably why I irritate so many people because I've made, I've made a decision. From now on, if I'm using a reactionary gif and I have a choice between someone who is an african-american i'll use the nice term since i'm about to piss a bunch of people off or a white dude i'm picking the black person hands down i don't care because i mean look if you're gonna be that mad about it then i'm gonna put it in your face every single chance i can get because these same people that are so overreactionary about this are the same people that will see a kid with down syndrome walking down the street point laugh and call them names 
it is asinine to me because you cannot be upset about one and be okay with the other. If you're going to be a jerk about one, you might as well be a jerk about the other. And as far as I'm concerned, because I've been that guy, because thanks to injuries, a lot of times when people first meet me, they assume that I have some sort of a genital birth defect because I have a limp and it's pretty noticeable. So they just assume that I'm one of these guys that's if I start talking that I'm going to sound like, you know, the kid from uh, Life Goes On. I've actually been called quirky more than once before people actually got to know me. Um, but it's just one of those things. After having that shoved in my face so many times, the the one thing that I figured out to do was basically flip it right back on them. And I'm saying this as somebody that was the head of security for the entire gay district in the state of Oklahoma and the in the metro area for 13 years. Those same liberals that would be the same ones crying about this were the ones that were making fun of me every chance they got before they realized that I was actually a human being that didn't have a disability, that I was actually injured doing a job. And that's what I'm talking about, because you can't have it both ways. So as far as I'm concerned, if you're that over emotional about it, I'm going to put it right back in your face every chance I get. And I don't care whether you like it or not. Yeah, I'm I'm down with that. I, I really don't. Um, I I don't buy into that kind of crap and I don't try to tiptoe around it. That is absolutely asinine and I'm not going to pretend like it isn't. But it's just it's just amazing to me that these same people that are throwing a fit about well you shouldn't use black the black the black gifts because you're a white person are the same people that would basically just be a complete bitch to you in person about anything and everything. Right. I, Absolutely. I, I just I I don't understand the double standard. But again, that's why 2017 politics has driven me entirely insane because we've now got this flip-flop where now the democratic party who up until now has used the constitution as toilet paper is the one screaming about how everything that trump is doing is unconstitutional and now we have the republicans well it doesn't matter if it's unconstitutional because y'all did it first yeah there, there there's a good excuse i'm always every time i hear somebody say but obama i'm i always i'm reminded of my grandmother if your friends jumped off a bridge would you do it too <laughs> yeah no definitely not all right so we did get a little bit of a late start so we need to start wrapping up so we can push on to the next one because we're down to about five minutes to the top of the hour so on the way out why don't you remind folks where it is that they can hang out with you when you're not on the radio hanging out with me sure come find me on twitter at jay homestead i'll tweet you some good african-american gifts and uh i don't even care if you at me and are angry about that because i don't care they're funny and i like them and uh jr jr homestead on facebook and then always at misfitspolitics.com join us tomorrow night for misfit mischief starting around 7 30 central so i guess like 8 30 eastern lots so of fun so I just had a really evil thought. We should literally talk to everybody in guns and just have them start using those gifts and start trying to trend the hashtag <laughs> black, blackface gifts just because. I'm just saying. Cause... It's not a bad idea. I don't care. I'm so down to be a jerk. <laughs> I'm just over all of it. All right. And as we get ready to change gears for America Off the Rails coming up next, I, of course, am Rick Robinson. And if you like what we do here, you can hang, hang out with me on Twitter at AOTR underscore host. Uh, you can actually, if I get one out to them soon enough, uh, read my publications on the new Americana. I've actually been asked to start contributing over there. So I hope to have something out to them within about a week or so. And, uh, you know, who knows? I may start seeing if I can put stuff out elsewhere, too. Um, and, of course, I am live every Sunday, uh, Monday through Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern, uh, coming up in just a few minutes. So hang around if you wish. If not, check it on a replay. It's all over the place. We will see you guys when we see you. want to thank everybody for taking the time to tune in with us tonight. Just remember, it is Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. We're nearly there. Stay strong, folks. We'll be back.